Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. And I want to welcome our newest Hudson Valley Square. He's from Peekskill, New York, right here in the Valley. You've seen him here before. Mr. Rob Lasanti. What's up, Rob? Welcome. What's going on, guys? What's up? What's going on, Rob? Going to break my cherry. You got to do it sometime, right? <laughs> so might as well be tonight, right? On, on a, on a kind of well. difficult assignment here. So uh, before we get to the assignment, let me introduce the rest of the crew. We've got Mr. Ryan Scow, Mr. Chris Canzanieri, and the king himself, Chris Allo. And uh, I might as well say it because uh, they're absent again, but uh, due to other things going on, uh, no Butch tonight, no Lynn tonight, no Nick tonight. And uh, Sydney Taylor, I think for most who don't know, the reason why she has not been on the show in a while, uh, not only the radio gig that she has, but she is also working the Alice Cooper tour now. So she's part of the staff on the Alice Cooper tour. So we probably won't see Sydney on here for a little while, but uh, we wish her all the best on that. I know she's having the time of her life as she should. In fact, Chris, uh, before we get started, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the, was the Philly show, right? That you went to recently? Uh Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah. The, uh, the Wind, the Wind Creek Casino, uh, was the opening night of the tour, and uh, yeah, I briefly talked to Sydney before we any after we, we didn't meet up, uh, but yeah, I was pleasantly surprised uh, to see uh, Sydney appear um, during the song uh, "Man Behind the Mask," which of course was from uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Was that part seven? I want to say, yeah. uh, I think, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, she comes out, spoiler alert, she comes out and she's like texting on her phone and Jason Voorhees comes out from the back and while Alice is singing and he's kind of, you know, menacing Sydney while she's really not paying any attention, not paying any attention to Jason. So it is pretty funny. Cool. I wonder if she's going to be doing that like every night on the tour. I'll be there on Friday in Albany, yeah. so there you I'll go. back. Yeah, Rick Labonte went to see them last night and he's like, I didn't see her. And I'm like, I don't know if she's doing that every night. I don't know what's going on. But Ryan, well, yeah, nice I mean, night, yeah, right. First night of the tour, I, I definitely did see her. But then, you know, later on, uh, I did ask Sydney, I'm like, hey, what was that you? Because there is a, another uh, a female who does have a striking resemblance to Sydney. And, you know, she's whipping Alice and putting him in a straitjacket. At one point, she's kissing Alice. And I'm like, wait, was that you? And she's like, no, no that's. That's Alice's wife. I was gonna say, oh, all right. I was gonna say, well, kissing Alice Cooper, that's a pretty big, you know, pretty really, really pretty good gig. And I was gonna say, man, I, I gotta get a gig where I can kiss Tony Iommi every night. But you know, I was gonna ask for some advice, but now I just few and far between, you know. You gotta... Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so that it, it was very cool to see her up there. Cool. And the show really is great. I haven't seen Alice Cooper. Um, he's one of those guys that I kind of. We did that episode. I kind of loved Alice Cooper in the 80s, and then I kind of fell off. Last time I saw him was like three times opening for Maiden. Yeah, that's that's had to be like 2012-ish. I think it was 2012, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you guys didn't go to the Bethel Woods show a couple of years ago. That was great. No. Oh, I missed that. I wish uh, I, I had, almost went. I missed it. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the current tour I thought was fantastic. Could be the best Alice Cooper show uh, I've ever seen. Like, it's real. Production-wise is much bigger than i remember and kane roberts back on uh, guitar yes yes kane roberts is back on. i actually thought they would have made a little bit of a of a bigger deal having kane roberts back i thought they maybe maybe would have played more uh from from raise your fist and yell they just did the one song um roses on white lace that they that alice has been doing for a while um but yeah they really didn't didn't make any big deal they just did the regular set and um but it was it was very cool. It's it's a really it's a great show. Awesome. So for those watching, if you want to go, hopefully try and see Sydney on tour with Alice yeah. Cooper, and if she makes an appearance, you know that's uh, pretty. I mean, scary. and I'll be honest, I was hoping, you know, being a blood and gore fan, I was hoping she was going to get a really brutal, gory death, like you know, like in a gore show or a horror movie. But yeah, it didn't happen. No. Oh well, it's all Jason's fault, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, on to the topic of the night. So uh, today we're going to be talking about title tracks. So uh, we've long talked about, uh, you know, those great classic title tracks that we all know and love. But uh, I asked everybody to kind of uh, think about their top three favorite title tracks of all time. And then also 
their least favorite three title tracks, which as I found that I think everybody else did, that proved to be the tough one here because I think most bands, when they do a title track, uh, the title tracks are usually pretty notable and really, really good. So I found that there was way more great title tracks than shitty title tracks, but I, I was able to come up with a couple. Uh, so and I'm curious to see what everybody else has come up with. So why don't we do the, the good ones first? So Rob, uh, I'll have you go first since it's your uh, inaugural night on the Hudson Valley Squares. What are your top three title tracks? Oh, oh Jesus. All right. So I'm going to start off with one that's um, that I think you guys mostly know, Robin Trower. So Robin Trower is one of my favorite artists. And um, I've always loved this album from the first day I heard it, Bridge of Sighs. Now, it's a classic album, but this is, that's why I said this was a hard task even for this album, but Bridge of Sighs has always been my go-to song that I always want to hear. No matter what, I love that song. And out of all the songs that are on the album, it's my favorite song. Um, just, you know, ethereal feeling that it is, and the solo in it, and and then of course James Dewar's vocals are just incredible, and it's what really got me in to Robin Trowell, who I've been following since 1980, and um, I've seen him over 30 times. So I mean, that was the whole reason I got into Robin Trowell. My my one of my best buddies had put it on for me, and that was it. I became an instant fan right away. So that's my first one. You want me to do all three? Yeah, you can do all three. Yep. Okay. Second one for me. Uh, is <laughs> this is another one Metallica Metallica Master of Puppets first time I heard that album um, and I heard that song I mean I was instant Metallica fan anyway I, I was already a Metallica fan I didn't really get into Metallica to ride the lightning to be honest with you and I could tell you guys stories about that but that's another, for another session um, but Metallica, when this album came out and I first heard this album, that song stuck out to me. I mean, just incredible riffing, the incredible solos, uh, you know, the uh, everything, everything about that song I love. Now, again, this is another classic album. There's so many good songs on here. There's not one bad song to me on this album. But for me, when I want to listen to Metallica, that's the song I hear. It's in my, you know, my playlist that I have the best of. It's always like the first song that I want to hear, especially if I'm working out at the gym or something like that. That's my go-to song. And it gets me pumped up all the time. So Metallica, Mess for Puppets is another one. And my last one, the best of, as you guys know, I am a big Judas Priest fan. All right. And I've been a Priest fan since 78. Um, and I, there's so many albums. But this song, when it came out, it, it ramped up everything about metal for me, especially in when it came out, which was Painkiller. Now, Painkiller came out in 19, was it 1990? Yep. And um, in fact, I saw that tour. That was with Megadeth and Testament. That's when I, that's when I really got into Testament. I mean, Testament, I became an instant Testament fan too, who I'm going to see in about another two weeks. Um, <clears throat> but Painkiller, now this is another album. There's a lot of great songs on here, but this song kicks it off. I mean, I think everybody that ever listened to the song that loves metal was instantly like, wow, priest are back. The priest came back and they came back with a vengeance. You know, part of it they say was because of what happened with the, you know, the whole incident with the kids that, you know, uh, the suicide thing, all that pack. And uh, I think for me, this, this song will always be my favorite song off the album, no matter what, because I, it's my another one. It's another go-to song. I listen to it a lot when I'm working out. I listen to it when I'm driving. I got to be careful because I've gotten pulled over once before listening to the song, you know, doing 85 or 90 on, on a highway. So, um, you know, I mean, and all the other songs are Metal Meltdown and Touch of Evil and, of course, Help Patrol. Well, I know Help Patrol is okay, but uh, All Guns Blazing. I mean, those songs are incredible, but Painkiller for me is the song. It's my go-to song. I've always loved the song from the day it came out and I don't get tired of it. You know, it's one of those songs because it, it's got so much energy. It just, I can't get tired of it. So those are my three pops. Great choices. Yeah. 
and, and you know, two of your picks, Priest and Trower, have other really good title tracks in their discography, which mm. may not, may or may not equal the ones you picked, but still really, really good. So yeah, those are good choices. All right, Mr. Scow, what do you got? All right, well, I got Nick's picks, so I'll read them all first. He sent it to me like five minutes ago. So Nick went with obviously Maiden, the Power Slave, fine choice. Uh, the Irish band Primordial, where greater men have fallen, another great choice. And uh, Elegy by Amorphous off their uh, third album from 95, 96. I forget what year it came out. So my picks, uh, yeah, the, the best, well, this was tough. This is like almost like picking fish out of a barrel. Uh, so I kind of picked some weird stuff here, or a little diverse stuff here. So the first one is I believe this album came out in 1991. Uh, best song on the album. And I think it's the best song they ever wrote by a wide margin. And that is the title track to uh, Slave to the Grind by Skid Row. Oh, um, just is a, it's a fucking beast. It's almost like a thrash metal song. So other good songs on this album. I think the first two albums are great. But that time, man, the title track to this is just, it goes on every workout mix I make. And I'm doing cardio in the gym or anything. It's always on that. Just perfect for it. Vocals are great. The riffs are great. Uh, never get tired of it. Second one, uh, I'm going to go with... One of my favorite death metal bands from Yonkers, New York. Yonkers. Came out in, you know, good old Yonkers came out in 2000. The band was Immolation, and it was the last track and the title track to their, let's see, one, two, their fourth album, uh, Close to a World Below. Uh, so it's rare that a band can write a eight and a half minute death metal song, and it doesn't get boring. But best song on this album, one of the best songs they ever wrote. Uh, and this is my favorite album by them, too. Just a really, really good album. And, uh, yeah, it's fucking great. It's rare, rare, rare a band can write a death metal song that long, and it never loses interest. Because that's not a form of metal that really uh, appreciates longer songs, but they pulled it off here. So, Immolation. And I'll mix it up a little bit more. We'll go over to California for a uh, band, I think this is 1984, their second album. First song on the album, title track to My War by Black Flag. Uh, definitely my favorite song by this band. Freaking love it. Great album, my favorite album by the band. You could tell that, uh, and then they were, they've been open about it. Uh, Greg Jean and Henry Rollins were huge Black Sabbath fans, and this album really showcases their love of Sabbath, especially the last three songs. Uh, but the first song, just fucking awesome. So, My War by Black Flag. So that is my three. A little, cool. little bit of column A, a little bit of column B there, a little bit of everything. <laughs> There's so much to choose from. Combination. Exactly. <clears throat> All right, Cans, what do you got? All right, I kind of feel like we're going out of the hair order here. We should have started Ryan, then Rob, then me. You know, how you kind of got the <laughs> add a little bit each time. But uh, anyway, I just noticed that, thought I'd pass it on. Um, all right, my third one, I, I had picked Painkiller, but I knew it wouldn't survive. So I decided to stick with Priest, and I'm going with Screaming for Vengeance which to me is the best song on that album and one of my favorite songs by them. Um, I kind of didn't just go with my favorites. I, I went with thinking that this song had to be the best song on the album too. And that one fits the bill for me. Uh, my next one, I went with Burn, Deep Purple. A lot of great songs on that album, but I think Burn stands head and shoulders above everything else on there. Killer track. I mean, Mistreated is awesome. I, the album is full of great songs, but Burn, I, whenever I hear that, I listen to it all the way through, turn it up, crank it up. Fantastic song. And my third one, I went with How Will I Laugh Tomorrow When I Can't Even Smile Today by Suicidal Tendencies. Another album full of great fucking songs. This one, though, it was kind of, you know, back when I was a kid and heard this, and it starts out a little slow, you know, and I used to skip it and then one day something happened, I listened all the way through and it's like, oh, wait a minute, you know, it, it turns into, never mind, it starts off with some real freaking shred guitar from Rocky George that, you know, usually gets buried in the mix and you can really hear it well there. Yeah, this guy was awesome. But then, you know, halfway through the song gets into this little breakdown mode and, you know, it's like, oh, you think something's funny? We'll laugh at this. And then it just takes off. <laughs> and, you know, so how will I laugh tomorrow? My third one. Cool. I love the fact, you know, the fact that I go last on these. So a lot of my picks already get chosen. That's why I have 20 of them. So I have a lot of other good wow. choices to go. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> All right, Mr. Allo, what do you got? That You could pull a keeler and make a lot of honorable mentions with that. 
lot. A lot. A lot. Like list. <laughs> Funny. All right. My, my first one, this, this one it was an easy one. Jumped out at me. Uh, Pete and I just did a, a whole episode on this band. Uh, it's my, my favorite song uh, from my favorite album from them. The title track uh, from Venom, At War With Satan. Uh, it's just 20 minutes. Uh, it still blows my mind that this band, known for, you know, writing Motorhead-esque material, managed to come up with this 20-minute cinematic masterpiece about heaven and hell and going to war with each other. And I still love that song, uh, even though it's really long. You know, you, you need you need 20 minutes to listen to it. Uh, but my next two, I was like, all right, you know, I don't want to pick the usual shit that I would always pick. So let me pick albums that I think suck but have really good title tracks. Maybe that could have been a whole nother, whole nother episode. Maybe I just <laughs> fucked myself on it, but I don't care. I'm going with it. Um, first one was uh, a band that I like, but man, I, I hate this fucking record. And I saw them on this tour and I hated it, but there's one, the one song I really like is the title track, uh, Roots or Roots Bloody Roots from Sepultura. Man, I, I loved Sepultura. I thought that album sucked. You know, I don't even, I looked at the title tracks and I'm like, straight hate I'm like well, i don't even know what that is there's all these fucking weird titles but man that song you know the title track yeah sure i'm all right i'm pulling the catino a little bit but i'm sure they didn't want to call their album roots bloody roots because of the whole sabbath connection but man that song fucking kills even though that, that album sucks and i know when they did the reu the reunion with the with the brothers reunited and when they were doing that whole record i'm like i'm passing i, I have no interest in that but i love that track uh, and then the next one uh, is, of course, Maiden. My favorite Maiden title track would be Power Sleeve. Um, but I don't want to use that because that's um, typical. Um, so I picked one from 2010 because I hate this fucking record, but I love this song. And it's uh, Final Frontier. I know I've told this story before. Uh, Maiden flew me to, uh, well, Maiden's record company, flew, which I don't even know who the fuck they were, flew me to Texas with a bunch of other writers for four days, all expenses paid to interview the band, hear the record before anybody else, and see the opening night of the tour in Dallas. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of them and tell them that I liked the record because they fucking hated it. But I'll never forget hearing that first song, you know, the title track, Final Frontier, and I'm like, sweet Jesus, I'm gonna love this record. And then the next fucking nine tracks, which went on for like four hours, bored me to tears. And I've tried because a lot of people love a couple songs i think it's blows but i love that one song uh final frontier and uh, yeah that's my three there you go with you, chris <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of like chris i mean i there are a, a lot of obvious choices here and i'm like you know i didn't want to pick and chris probably was thinking the exact same, yeah, same thing we, we could have easily picked black sabbath heaven and hell sabbath bloody sabbath mob rules right yeah. you know i had burn on my list i love burn but i talk about burn so much you know i, I didn't want to talk about stuff that me personally have just i've mentioned over and over and over again so i'm going to try and deviate maybe just a little bit and i also didn't want to pick any prog rock title tracks because we may do the same show on in the prog seat so i figure i'll save that for them so i'm going to go my first choice again a band another band that has a bunch of really good title tracks and it's Thin Lizzy, and it's Bad Reputation from the album of the same name. Great one. Killer one. I mean, you know, could have picked Jailbreak, right? Fighting's another one, but I was like, I, I think when it comes down to it, Bad Reputation just has so much balls. It's full of piss and vinegar. The riff is great, and it, it's one of my favorite Thin Lizzy songs, so I wanted to go with that one as one of them. Uh, the other two here, you know, oh, God, I'm, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this one that I was going to pick. Uh, how about the title track to Diary of a Madman by Ozzy. That was that was on my my short list too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's the best song ever. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would agree. Absolutely right. 100%. It's my favorite Ozzy song, and it's not even close. Uh, and I like Bark at the Moon, you know, enough. But man, to me, Diary of a Madman is a genius, genius track, and Randy's guitar work is just off the charts great. It's like you know when I think of how tragic a loss Randy Rhodes's death was that's the song that pops into my head because oh, yeah. I think I mean, that that's... is the song that foreshadows all the great shit that he would have done afterwards had he lived. So just such a killer, killer song. Uh, and just so everybody knows, I was going to pick Holy Diver there, but I got to talk about Holy Diver all the time. So I left that one out. Uh, so my last one, uh, I'm 
I got to go with Lights Out by UFO. It's one of my favorite UFO songs of all time. It, it's a, a great title track on a great album, but kind of to echo what Rob's uh, words were before, it's really great when the title track is also the best song on the album and Lights Out is the best song on that album. There's a couple others that come close, but for me, the title track there is so good. Michael Shanker, man, it's all you need to be said. It's just such a, a killer song. The band is firing on all cylinders. So uh, yeah, so Lights Out, Bad Reputation. And... Diary of a Madman are my picks. Nice. All right. How about the bad stuff or the not so good? Rob, back to you. <laughs> uh, well, like you guys were saying, this is this was difficult. Really, really hard. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I am one of them that I picked. I, I'm probably going to get hate from Chris, but uh, that's all right. Rob. We'll let it go. <laughs> well, I'm going to start off with Def Leppard. Okay. Def Leppard high and dry. Now, I, I, after Power Mania, I was kind of, you know, like I, I've seen enough shows here to know nobody, not too many people like Def Leppard after that, that last just, album. Just Butch and Lynn. Yeah. So for me, and I saw this tour too. I, I mean, I love this album. All the songs are great, but the title track high and dry never did it for me. Never did it for me. I never thought it was a great song. I mean, compared to another hit and run, let it go. Uh, you got me running. Lady Strange is a great song on through the night. And Mirror Mirror, I love that freaking song. That is such a great song. I enjoy just never, I don't know. I just never I think it was like just not catchy enough. It was too catchy. That's what I was trying to say. Everything else was like, you know, a lot different than that song. That I think they were trying to get a hit with that song, with the high and dry song. I mean, guitar work on here was great. This again, this this album, this band was great up up to that point on this album. So for me, high and dry from Def Leppard is the worst. Now this is one going back to another band that I love. Uh, actually, I already mentioned it, but and this was hard. But Judas Priest, Defenders of the Faith. Yep, that was on my list. I never ever said i always said from day one when i bought this album and I, I said why i mean i understood it was cool and we were defenders of the faith i understand that but why not put a, another great song on there because this album is a freaking masterpiece and, and, and you know in my eyes i could have went with heavy duty i mean that's not a great song either really on the album but defenders of the faith was just like it's only a minute and 30 seconds you know what mm -hmm. i mean but i just felt that you know, they could have put something else on there between with heavy duty and defenders. They could have done like another six minute song, like like the Sentinel or uh, Jawbreaker. You know, rock hard, right? Free, uh, free. I mean, free will burning is like painkiller; just knocks you right out as soon as it comes. You know, you put that needle to the the vinyl. I remember the first time I listened to I could I listened to this album probably I'm not lying thirty times the day it came out. So, and I would just skip the defenders would come on. I go right back to. The, you know, that's when you had to pick up a needle, you know. So that for me, as much as I'm a diehard priest fan, I always never really cared about that song. I always skip it over. Now I'm gonna go with something totally different. It's rock genre, but it's totally different here. You know, we're talking a lot about mostly about metal here tonight, right? Uh, although Trower's the rock and the blues. Uh but this album I like, I got it's got a you know, a sentimental value for a lot of reasons for me. Journey Frontiers. Journey Frontiers, I just never liked Frontiers. That's another one. All these other songs on here are great. I mean, I, for some reason, I don't know what it is about that song. I think it's just, they repeat the chorus so many times, kind of like Maiden does a lot of times now. <laughs> but I mean, it just, I, I never got into that song. Now, everything else I like um, on this album, it's a classic album for me. I mean, I, like, you know, uh, I just, I, I just love, I love the album, but I just never liked that song. I, you know, all these other songs, like I said, has uh, a lot of sentimental value, which I'm not going to get into, but, and that's it for me with this one. But I have one more, but we can, if you want to do a, uh, a Steve Killer. Yeah, we'll, so we'll, we'll suck our line for some honorable mentions at the end. Do that. Yeah, cool. All right, Ryan. All right, so uh, first one, Defenders of the Faith. 
nice and obvious. <laughs> yeah, when you when you pick this topic, I'm like, well, that's the easy one because yeah, right now it's such a throwaway, stupid track. Uh, so second one. Uh, so this song, I don't, I don't, I don't hate this song. I thought it was kind of a interesting take from a different band, but it, I don't know. It's just when, I, but it's the last song on the album, and it always kind of lets you down, kind of. Although it's supposed to. So the song is the title track from 1916 by Motorhead. And it's, not a, too. it's not a bad song, but it, and it's like you know, I get it. It's like a reflective, somber song about the you know World War One. See what Lemmy's trying to do. Uh, I know I don't think he was a failure at it, but it's one of my favorite Motorhead albums. And compared to the rest of the album, it's just kind of like, eh, you know. It kind of ends on a whimper, I guess. I guess putting it as the last track made sense. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to slag it too much because I really don't hate it. But I will be honest. A lot of times I put this album on, I do skip that that song. Uh, and there's a band that I like a lot from the '90s that we don't ever really talk about on this show. I don't know if anybody else likes them, but fuck it, I do. Uh, it is the title track to the second album by Nine Inch Nails, "Downward Spiral." Uh, it's the next to last song on the album. And it's not even really, it's just like this somber, like almost like a atmospheric, it's not, not even really a song. It's like this couple minute long, just uh, interlude, I guess. So almost like another throwaway track. And then it ends with Hurt, which, you know, is a hit for them. And then Johnny Cash, obviously, is an even bigger hit for Cash. But uh, yeah, I love this album. And the title track's just kind of three minutes of like background. It's like a fan running in the background. So again, it's kind of pointless. But uh, otherwise, I love this fucking album. So. That was an easy pick. And Nick's pick. So Nick actually contradicted uh, Chris. And he said the title track to the final frontier. He hated that one. <laughs> and you know how Nick is about Maiden. He's like, it was one of the first ones he picked. Then he said uh, 1916 by Motorhead. And I'm going to, I think he entered this one in error, but he didn't correct it. So I'm going to read it out to him. Sorry, Nick. Uh, he said, St. Anger by Metallica. And I'm like, well, that song sucks. But the whole album sucks. So, you know, it's like the suck doesn't rise above like the, the rest of the album. It's just like one solid level of fucking shit. But uh, he's at work right now, so he didn't get back to me. So, yeah, that was his third choice. He's not wrong. It, it is, oh, he's definitely not. Suck. Yeah. He's not wrong, but every other song sucks just as much. So, you know, it's kind of like letter of the law there, you know. But yeah, those are his picks. All right. All right. Chris Cantonary. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave this out where I, I picked one from an album that I thought was pretty weak and, and kind of sucked all the way through. And one that I thought was the worst song on a really good album, which was Defenders of the Faith. That's all blown to shit. And, <laughs> and my last one, I picked the least good song on an album that's otherwise, well, is it's not a bad song, but it's just not as good as the rest of the great songs on a great album. So the first one, shit album, shit song, I picked It's Hard by The Who. I do not like this album. I hate that fucking song. The existence of Eminence Front and it's, you know, mediocre, low-level okayness, I think keeps that, that, you know, album from going the same way as St. Anger. It's just being just a straight slab of subpar crap. I don't know what they were doing with that album, but it's hard. The it's title very, track, It's very, 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 very hard. It, it sucks hard, so... <laughs> um, to replace Defenders of the Faith, I'm going to go with Fire of Unknown Origin by Blue Oyster Cult. That's by far my least favorite song on that album. I love that album. I love all the other songs. That one, it's not quite there. Listen, I wanted to go with Defenders of the Faith, but I'll, I'll use this one. You know, <laughs> it's not my favorite song in that album. Interesting. My third one. For a great album that's great all the way through, but the title track is the least great song. I'm going with Some Girls by the Stones. I don't think Some Girls is the even close to being as good as everything else on that album, which is, you know, wall-to-wall -wall classics, wall-to-wall -wall excellence. And Some Girls is just okay. So I almost picked that song for the same reason. Like it's a good song, but every other song is better. Yeah. It's just not living up to it. The, the company it's keeping. So, yeah. still a great album and not yeah. a bad song. It's a good song, too. But yeah, you're right. Okay. Interesting choices. Yeah, the BOC choice. Well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, whatever. With my least, you know, it could be almost be in the same category as the, uh, as some girls. Yeah. Yeah. I, but, hear, I hear you. Yeah, you know, I'm under the gun here. I had to come up. <laughs> this is hard to pick in the three like yeah. it was definitely it was definitely difficult 
Yeah, it was. It was. All right, Chris Allo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like everybody else, I had Defenders of the Faith. I remember the first time I, I, like, I got the tape. I guess uh, I, I used to like listen to music uh, while I you know, watch wrestling or something. And I remember thinking, wait, did, did, is my tape missing a song? I guess because I didn't pay attention for that 90 seconds. I actually had to rewind it. And I'm like, that's it? Like, that's the song? Like, Screaming for Vengeance is such a fucking amazing song. And the last album, and this this is it. I'm like, you guys suck. So, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that song blows. Uh, yeah, and I picked 1916. Uh, I hate that fucking song. I know Lemmy loved it. I don't care. Lemmy crooning about people dying in World War One. Yeah, it's a sad topic, but it's a shit song. I fucking, I can't stand that song. Uh, but all right, next one I picked, uh, Rust in Peace. I think uh, that's a great record. It seems to be everybody's favorite Megadeth record. Uh, but the title track, I think, is definitely uh, fits the criteria because you it's were looking for the, the worst song on the record, and I think I think that definitely fits. It's just kind of kind of lame. Uh, another one. one, yeah, another one I picked, kind of an obscure one, I'm sure. Uh, but I, I love Danzig. Uh, I loved uh, his first Samhain record which was called Initium, um, but the title track, Initium, is like a minute of like, you know, weird swirling sound effects, like you'd see on the old chiller theater with the six the six fingers. But then like Glenn Danzig, it's, it's like so, you know, 40 years later, I'm still cringing at it. He's like, Danzig is barking like, and he's like, you think you know pain? You know nothing. And, and I'm like, it's just cringy. You know, it's just terrible. And then it kicks in to the song Samhain, but it always bothered me that whoever mastered it, I'm sure it was Glenn, the levels, you know, the the sound volume, Initium is up here, and then when the rest of the album kicks in, it's down here. So like when you're playing it, you have to make sure to lower it once the intro song of Initium is over. That always fucking bothered me, and I just, I don't like it. And uh, yeah, the last one I picked, kind of similar, it's just, you know, synthesizers for a minute, 1984 from van halen if i had to pick a worse song on that record yeah it's definitely that it's you know i guess it's okay as an intro but using it as a tiny title track it is kind of a disappointment so yeah that's uh that's my three cool all right one of mine um kiss title track to crazy nights oh yeah that's a good one <clears throat> Oof. that's a good bad one yeah it, it's it's like really cheesy really cheesy it's catchy as all hell but like you listen to it and you're like yeah it's like i'm, I'm almost afraid to say that i kind of like this song because it really does suck but it's it's just so catchy you can't like you can't say you absolutely hate it but i'm like man and then then you catch yourself singing and you're like please stop please stop no good uh the title track to pat travers crash and burn i mean you know we want pat travers to be a guitar hero right and then here's this song it just kind of pulses and lots of synthesizers and i'm like where's the guitar on here pat i don't know i always thought and again it's probably one of the worst songs on that album which is a really really good album that's the same album that spawned snort and whiskey right so you get that and then you get this and it's like what happened here uh another one here um and i'm not a big fan of this album it's one of my least favorite albums from this particular band and this title track was a big hit and they still play it on classic rock radio i never liked it and i don't like the album either jethro tull's too old to rock and roll too young to die don't get it i'm a huge tull fan i don't like that song don't like that album uh and i'll throw one more out here because i have an extra here uh and i'm not a fan of this album i think this album was a horrible follow-up to one of the biggest selling albums in rock and roll history fleetwood mac tusk the title track just why this whole album is filled with like weird songs and nothing really catchy and anthemic like the rumors album and the title track tusk is like three and a half minutes of like percussion and sound effects and some little bit of vocals here and there it's just kind of like a throwaway track and it's like uh yeah no good no good so that's what i got nice. <clears throat> rob what do you got left uh you guys do you guys have any like favorite title tracks left you want to do any honorable mentions on that front um, only i only have favorite ones i have no other i couldn't think of okay. anything else. i have i have one worse one okay what do you got <laughs> and uh i'm probably gonna get shit for this but it's it's like what uh you guys would i think you guys did a show on 
the song that you don't need to hear anymore. Well, this is the song that was played the shit out of from day one. And it's not my favorite song on the album. So for me, it's the worst song. And it's Black Sabbath Paranoid. Silence. I know it. <laughs> I mean, it could be the worst song on the album, but it still is fucking great because the album is no, so good. I'm not saying it, <laughs> it, it sucks. There's a thing, there's a difference between it sucks and it's the worst album, the worst song on the album. I, Every other song on this album is, to me is, is incredible. I mean, it's what got me into Sabbath. You know, this this is I, when this came out is when that's how long I've been a, a, a metal fan since this came out. But when I thought about Paranoid, I'm like, I, I just, you know, it's just the same riff over and over and over again. I mean, the solo is great, but I just, I don't have to hear the song anymore. You know, I mean, I've heard it a billion times, you know, whether it, I think uh, people talked about one time, was it Back in Black or something? I, I thought that one too. That was another one, Back in Black. I don't have to hear that song anymore either. You know, if I wanted to put it on my worst for it, you know, for that album, that, that would be my worst pick on that album too. You know? Yeah, so, I, I think Paranoid is a really interesting pick because, I mean, I'm, I was never a huge fan of it to begin with, but it is such a popular song from the it's the most popular song this band ever did it was a throwaway song that they recorded at the last minute because they had to add additional uh, material to the record and what did it take an hour i think not even to put that song together and boom it becomes the biggest song they ever had i never need to hear it again ever uh, i was thinking of it too for that same reason yeah, i mean it, i like it but it sucks i, I just really I take it over planet caravan right. so and I, I, i'll tell you we're the talking truth. the album as a whole right right i'll definitely take it over over planet caravan you, you don't like Planet Caravan at no. all. I mean, not as much as I like the song Paranoid, but yeah, that that's me. I think for me, you know, you know what it was was when I heard when I heard it on the radio first, and then I I went out and bought the album. I was what was was I ten years old, eleven years old, whatever I was. And when I heard the rest of the album, that's how I became a metal fan. To be honest with you, that's what got me into metal was this album. You know, I mean, so uh, anyway, well, that was my pick for that one. And like I said, ACDC could have been the other one too. So, Ryan, you got no more. Chris, uh, you got any more? Yeah, I got one, and it's a, it's a slight. We're gonna call it a slight Catino, because it's a title track except for one letter. Uh, so <laughs> the album is Battle Hymns, but the song is Battle Hymn. So we're gonna. Just I think we can that count. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's not quite yeah. a Catino, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> that's real, but yeah, it's but it's. I think it's it's a great album, first Man of War album. Uh, but the title track is just my favorite song on it. One of the best songs they ever wrote, maybe the best song they ever wrote. You know, make a list. Uh, definitely very fucking high in the pecking order. So, Battle Hymn from Battle Hymns. There you and, go. And uh, the second one, I'm gonna get a little more obscure. It's a. Uh, and it was on Relapse Records for a while. I'm not even sure what label they're on now, but I still like them, still follow them a lot. But I'm picking it because the album opens with an acoustic version of the title track and closes with a regular distorted heavy metal version of the title track, uh, both of which are very cool and kind of bookend it, pretty interesting. But it's the 1997 album uh, Temple of the Morning Star by Today is the Day. And yes, that is a lot of sperm going into a pentagram. Yeah, it's ready to recover there. So, uh, yeah, the way the way they decided to do that, it opens with this nice soft acoustic version. It's a very it's, they're they're a dark, morbid band. The song's very dark and kind of morbid, but they open it with the acoustic version, uh, and then they close with the electric one. It's just it's just cool. I don't think I've ever heard of another band do that. Maybe they have, but uh, that one immediately came to mind. So, yeah, that, but that's all I got. Yeah, and I couldn't think of any other shitty ones. It was uh, that was a fucking stretch. It was hard. Yeah, it was hard. Can you got any leftovers on either one? Uh, blackout. You know? Oh yeah! Oh, shit, I forgot about blackout. Yeah. Love gun, maybe. Yep. But uh, definitely uh, metal church. Oh, metal church. Oh, hell yeah! yeah that's oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah, great. Oh, there are millions of. Yeah, there are tons. Mr. Allo, you got any left? I was gonna say the only one I wrote down, uh, Hello Eights. Uh, you know, I like Hello Eights. I, you know, it's it's not a, well the first three. It's my least favorite, but man, that title track is is just amazing. And to this day, it's still just absolutely crushing. Yeah, I was surprised Ryan didn't pick that one. 
I, I actually I thought other people would pick it because the intro to that song is like I don't know, like the best oh. thing in metal. Just the way it builds okay. up, builds up with that fucking time. Yeah, it makes you want to flip fucking tables over and run through walls. Yeah. <laughs> so no one yells at you for having flipped over the table. You know, you, you need it. Yeah. You need a t-shirt, dude. You got to add t-shirt. <laughs> but yeah, if any song makes you want to flip over fucking tables, title track the Hello H is the song. Yeah. Oh, no yeah. One. yeah. No one. Mm. So I'll, I don't have this on my list, but I'm going to throw it out there because if we don't mention it, we're going to get like five comments to be like, I can't believe you guys, nobody mentioned Hotel California. There, we mentioned oh, it. So uh, yeah. I will throw out a couple, a, a bunch actually, just just, just because. Well, so uh, you got the list. So I got the list. So I, I, can't well. let it go, I can't let it go to waste, Chris. Like, you know, I got to, I got to put it to use here uh, as a, as a uh, homage to Rob's background there. Blackwater Park from Opeth. It's got to be on this list somewhere. Um, what else we got? How about Virgin Killer by the Scorpions? Mm. Right? Welcome to my nightmare. Uh, we talked about Alice Cooper before. Welcome to my nightmare. School's out. Right? Billion Dollar Babies. All great title tracks. Uh, and here's a great one that I it almost made my top three. Uh, Mr. Universe by Gillen. If anybody's mm. not heard Mr. Universe, the album by Gillen, it's an amazing album, and that title track is just absolutely immense. Uh, what else? In for the Kill by Budgie. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, ah, so heavy. Just amazing. Uh, Thunder and Lightning by Thin yeah. Lizzy. Yep. And a uh, bunch of Thin Black Lizzy. Rose, too. Black Rose. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many good uh, Thin Lizzy ones. Uh, what else? Victims of the Future Victims of the Future by Gary Moore. Another great one. Um, let's see. The Beatles, Let It Be. Ah, there's so many of them. Like close, to the close to the edge. Close to yeah, close to the edge. I mean, the pod ones are ridiculous. You know, Minstrel yeah. in the Gallery, Core of the Crimson King. I mean, so many good ones. Uh, Medusa by Trapeze, Grand Illusion by Styx, um, Creatures of the Night by Kiss, another great one. Yeah, there's so many good ones. It's only Rock and Roll, but I like it by The Stones. Fireball by Deep Purple. I mean, there's so many good ones. Stormbringer for crying out loud, right? So, so many good ones. So, uh, there you have it, everybody. Our top title tracks and our bottom title tracks or least favorite title tracks. So uh, down in the comments below, give us your top three and your bottom feeder three. And, uh, you know, be curious to see if there's some really obvious ones that we totally forgot about or, you know, whatever. But I uh, always like to see what everybody else comes up with. So thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together. All the damn all time. The damn time. Please hit that like button before you go. Very, very important to the whole YouTube algorithm. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please do so and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And we'll uh, see you next week here on the Hudson Valley Squares. Tune in tomorrow for In the Prog Seat and uh, for Ryan Scow and Nick Franco, wherever he may be, and Butch Jones and Lynn Versace and Sydney Taylor, Chris Canzanari, Rob Lasante, and Chris Allo, I and P. Pardo. Good night, everybody. See you next Monday. Take care.